Hello everybody, my name is Jeremy and I am presenting the Wickard v. Filburn case for Christian Kong, myself, Jeremy Bruni, Brian Whitkey, and Ben Homer. So a little bit of background here was that Roscoe Filburn was an Ohio wheat farmer. Uh, at the time it was right around the beginning of World War II and wheat prices among other grains was fluctuating rapidly up and down, up and down. And farmers were losing money and, and closing farms and then they were booming and having huge amounts of money. So the U.S. government stepped in to try and regulate, try to calm down the fluctuations. And what they did is they used the, the they set up a rule that regulated or limited the amount of land a farmer could use to grow these grains. In Philburn's case, he was told before he planted for the season that he was allowed 11.1 acres of wheat. And then before he harvested, he was told, "Don't forget, you're allowed 11.1 acres of wheat." Uh, what Philburn planted was 23 acres of wheat. Now, from some of the historical background I've read, I've learned this isn't wasn't too uncommon, even with the regulations. These farmers were hedging in case of frost or bugs or whatever, so that they could, you know, make enough to get their 11.1 acres and, and make some money. I guess Philburn had a great year, and all 23 acres came up. Now, Philburn claimed that that most of the, well, all of this extra corn wasn't going to be sold. He would only sell his quota, and the rest was going to go to feed his animals and and for personal use. Well, the agriculture department department said, no, no, your limit's 11.1 acres. You're going to get fined, and they fined him $117.11, which is approximately today's dollars, about $1,700, which is still a pretty bit of money for a farmer. So Philburn and some of the other wheat farmers backing him sued the federal government saying that this was overreach because this wheat was not being used in, in commerce. He was using it for his own use. So the, the, he was saying the government using commerce clause to regulate what he can grow on his land for his use was overreach. And the district court agreed with him. They said, yes, that, that, or that may be the case. What they really said was that the, the, uh, government screwed up and how they did some of the things and it was thrown out for procedural issues and they filed for filter. Uh, the United States government appealed to the to the Supreme Court and it was argued and this decision was unanimous at nine to zero and Associate Justice Robert Jackson wrote the decision for the case. So some of the things that were said was that Philburn said it's not interstate commerce, so it shouldn't be subject to penalty because he was using it for himself. He wasn't selling this stuff. It wasn't going into the market. How could it be you know, regulated by commerce if it's not being sold? Um, and once again, this is beyond the scope. The commerce clauses for what you sell. I'm not selling it. I can't be regulated. Wickard, who was the Secretary of Agriculture for the U.S. at the time, said that um, it's not just about what is sold, but it also what is consumed. Uh, anything produced in excess, of, in excess is qualified as available for marketing. And what that really means is that you have it. How we know as soon as we walk away, you're not going to go dump it onto the market and cause the market to fluctuate, what she was saying here. Uh, the opinion was that Despite being grown on one, one's own land for one's own use, Congress can still apply national quotas. And the other se section is that, may, that such production and consumption may be sufficiently large enough to affect the overall national goal of stabilizing prices. What, he, what the Justice Roberts was saying here is that this isn't really about Filburn. He, who cares if he does another has 11 or so acres of wheat that he's going to use for himself. That doesn't really affect anything too big, but if Wilburn's neighbor catches on and does the same thing and his neighbor's neighbor does the same thing and then his neighbor's and then his entire state does the same thing, internet, inter, interstate commerce can be destroyed. So by saving they, their wheat and growing it for just themselves, they're not buying it from the market and therefore the market is affected. Um, and they also said that because of this, it's not about just buying or selling of goods. It's also about anything that can, is consumed or marketed. So basically what they're saying here is that if it could go into commerce, then it's regulated, um, even if it never goes anywhere near. Uh, the controversy here 
is is pretty clear here. It, it, what this f Supreme Court was actually saying here is that anything that can be used in commerce at any time is subject to regulation by the federal government. F federal government can regulate something you produce on yourself for your kids. They can regulate later on. We find that they can make you pay a fine if you don't get health insurance. Um, basically, anytime you have a good that you are using in any way, selling, it is subject to the Commerce Clause. Uh, this is a pretty big deal. But this basically means is that the federal government has the ability to control pretty much any tangible good or beyond that even sometimes any good that's available in the US if it's tangible if we can do something with it they can regulate it this basically gives them authority over computers over anything uh, I saw a case where a group claimed that if silencers which are against federal regulations but are controlled in the Commerce Clause um, if they're made in Utah, sold in Utah, and only used in Utah, they're not in interstate commerce, and then therefore they can't be regulated. Well, because of this ruling, that's obviously not the case, and that was shot down pretty quick. Um, anything that can be used in commerce in any state can be regulated here. And this held pretty much for a long, long time. Um, it basically gave the, the federal government unregulated control over all, everything in the U.S. Uh, f some current court cases have pulled that back a little bit. For example, there was a court case that said that just because it's an it's a gun is an item doesn't mean the f the Commerce Clause can be used to stop concealed weapon laws, which kind of makes sense. But really, under this law, the the federal government has the right to regulate everything in the U.S. Uh, this was at the center of the Affordable Care Act debate where the people sued saying the federal government does not have the authority to fine us if we don't buy something. And because of Filburn, yes, they do. So later court cases obviously pulled this back just a hair, but it's still pretty big. This is also the Hallmark case that for marijuana growth that said that marijuana growth could be regulated by the federal government. The, I mean, the FDA, all of that stuff is because of this one case. So it's a pretty big deal. Thank you.